Let's have a look at the perfect way to position your feet when driving a manual car. And I'm going to include small feet as well. Perfect foot placement prevents up to 30% of car accidents. And the biggest cause of all of this is people wearing boots and high heels. You always want to try and wear flat, thin shoes. Okay, so the most important part of positioning your feet on the pedals is your distance to the pedals. What you don't want is you don't want your leg digging into the seat because that means anytime you're in traffic driving, you're gonna be straining your leg and that's gonna get real sore real quick. So when I say dig into the seat, if you can't get a finger under your leg comfortably, your leg's digging into the seat. So all you want to do is just move your seat forward a bit, try putting the clutch fully down, Let's see if you can get a couple of fingers under there. If you can, absolutely fine. If you're really digging in there, you need to move a little bit closer. So for my height, this is about perfect. The other really important part of positioning your feet is using the ball of your foot. The ball of your foot is the end part of your foot that your toes attach to. This is going to give you the most control when pressing the pedals because you're going to have the most control of the pressure. And finally, the last golden rule of positioning your feet is always try and keep your heel on the floor. Now, there are some caveats to this. For instance, if you've got really, really small feet like my wife, you might struggle with that, but we'll talk about that more later. Okay, now we're gonna start with the right foot. Your right foot is used for both the, the gas and the brake. I call the gas the gas rather than the accelerator, but it's the same thing. It's just a lot faster for me to say. Now, as I mentioned before, you want your heel planted on the floor. If you have your heel on the floor, you're just using your foot and you're gonna have far more accuracy. If your heel's in the air like you just don't care, you're using your whole leg and I can already feel the muscle in my weak leg cramping up, tensing, and I'm not gonna have anywhere near as much control when using my entire leg as opposed to just using my foot. As I mentioned before, we do not want to use our entire foot because it's harder to bring our foot up off the pedal and swivel it across to the brake. Can you see my foot doesn't want to swivel? In fact, it hurts because I hurt my ankle in Babington not long ago. So yeah, we don't want to do that. Also, it's not comfortable bringing your foot up that much, more than that 90 degrees, with my leg. So to avoid that, we have our heel back and we use the ball of our foot, meaning we don't need to go more than the night. Blah, 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 more than the 90 degree bend. It's also far easier for me to swivel my foot from the brake back to the gas and so on and so forth. Now where you actually plant your heel does also matter. For me, it's far easier for me to swivel my foot to the right than it is to the left. My foot doesn't want to go in. I don't know if it's an old injury or what, but have a go, it's not that comfortable. It's far more comfortable to swivel outwards. So for me, planting my heel in line with a brake pad, it's far easier to then swivel my foot over the gas and use the gas at a slight angle. I can then swivel it back to the brake comfortably. If I try to do it the other way around on the gas, I'm not too bad on the gas pedal, but when I try and swivel to the brake, that's not a comfortable day. But you can position your heel wherever you like, whatever is comfortable for you. By positioning my foot over the brake as well, I am going to have more power if I actually need to emergency stop because I'm in line with the brake. Whereas if I'm at an angle with the brake, I'm not gonna have as much power. Now you could argue and say, I don't have as much power with the gas pedal, but when do you need extra power on the gas pedal? It's a pretty soft pedal to press, so it's not a big problem. As I mentioned before, a lot of this does depend on how big and how long your feet are. For me, I've got size 12 feet, so this is quite comfortable. But if your feet are getting much less than size four, you may end up having to keep your heel in the air like you just don't care. By the way, if you watch to the end of the video, you are going to see me lose my actual mind. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> Okay, now how do we perfectly position our left foot? So our left foot is for pressing the clutch only. So when we're not using the clutch, our left foot will rest on the little fake pedal on the left of the clutch. Hopefully you can see it just down here. If we're coming up to a junction or any time that we think we're going to need to change gear or slow down to less than five miles an hour, we'd hover our foot over the clutch pedal and keep it there. Then using the ball of our feet, we're going to put the clutch all the way down. Now what you notice is when I put the clutch down, my foot slides forward. So there's absolutely no point keeping my heel on the floor because my foot's gonna slide forward anyway. But when you bring your clutch pedal back up, that is when you want to plant that heel on the floor because that's going to give you the control that you need to get the bite point. Then you start raising the clutch and yes, your foot is going to slide up the pedal slightly, but that's okay because once you finish with the clutch, you're not going to need it again unless you want to put it back down in which case you raise your heel off the floor and put the pedal all the way in but normally we'd be putting our clutch down with our heel in the air like we just don't care then plant our heel on the floor then raise the clutch to the bite point 
before resting our foot back on the left on the fake pedal and driving on because we're not going to need our clutch again for a normal driving situation. Now the only difference with an automatic car is we don't have a clutch, which means our left leg is now useless. So our left leg just stays on the fake pedal resting spot at all times. Our right foot does all the hard work. And again, we just swivel our foot from between the brake and the gas as needed. Tend to more be in line with the brake and swivel across to the gas but if you prefer to hover a bit more in the middle, whatever suits you best. Now the problems really arise if you have size four feet or smaller, just like my wife. Well, I don't know if they're size four, but they're pretty small feet, which means anytime my wife drives anywhere, she drives with her foot in the air like she just doesn't care, meaning she never drives with her heel on the floor. And she passed the test first time, so it can be done. Now the bonus to this is you're going to end up with really strong legs. But the con to this is it's probably going to take you a lot longer to actually learn to get the bike because you're having to learn to, to get accuracy with your entire leg rather than your, just your foot. But it is perfectly possible. So if you do have small feet and you can't quite keep your heel on the floor, don't panic, just bear with it. Take your time and practice makes perfect. Perfect foot placement prevents up to 30% of car accidents. And the biggest cause of all of this is people wearing boots and high heels. You always want to try and wear flat, thin shoes. And there's a few really good reasons for this. The first one, especially with boots, is they've got a big lip on. And when you're trying to swap your foot between the pedals, you're more likely for the lip to catch on the second pedal. So when you're pressing the brake, you might accidentally press the gas at the same time. And when you're pressing the gas, you might accidentally press the brake at the same time, which can be a little bit of a shock. Most boots are around two or three centimeters thick, which makes it far more difficult to feel the sensitivity of the pedals, especially when you've got to be really, really accurate, which means I'm far more likely to come off the clutch too quickly or press the gas too hard if I'm wearing boots. So put simply, don't wear boots. And this is actually one of my golden rules when I'm teaching people to drive. I've got a guy at the moment who's had three lessons so far, and this is the first lesson he's actually not worn boots. And I had to send him back inside today to change his shoes. Well, I asked if you go back inside to change your shoes because every lesson he's been really struggling with getting the, the bike points. And as I pointed out, it's one because he's not been putting his heel on the floor and he's not been putting his heel on the floor because he's been wearing boots. Surprise, surprise, today we go out, he's doing the junctions perfectly. Sometimes we have to learn the hard way. And I perfectly understand that some jobs you have to wear boots. So, you know, how are you gonna get to work? Well, when I have to wear boots to work and these boots are from my previous job, I keep them in the boot and have a pair of driving shoes. Easy. And those rubbish shoes we're talking about include flip-flops as well. And as the name implies, they flip and they flop. You've got no support in the back of your foot. So if you put your heel down, they're gonna slide forward. If they slide forward and slide off, they're gonna get caught under the pedal or get caught on somewhere. By the way, if you're buying a new car and you should need to get it from A to B, or you're doing a bit of driving lessons at home with mum, dad, or someone else in the family and you need a short-term policy, have a look at Go Shorty. They will give you a quote in less than one minute. And the best bit is it won't affect mum or dad's no claims. Yes. If you want some more driving tips, have a look at this video here. If you want to see me lose it, watch this bit. Pull that space. <laughs> And if you watch my lips here, I start talking about a new style of driving called Don't Be A Silly Duck. 